so I guess it's time for us to go. Um, I'm Rowan Taylor, I'm your moderator today. Welcome to the Sunday Assembly. Uh, we are all about um, living better, helping often, and wondering more. And every month we have a slightly different take on that, on that broad theme and a slightly different mix of people here to celebrate it with us. So thank you all for coming. Uh, some of you probably had to choose between going skiing or coming here. And you made the wrong choice. Or sleeping. <laughs> sleeping is also good. <laughs> um, we will start um, with a song, just to get us all in the mood and to feel equally uncomfortable with each other. So, <laughs> so we will stand up. And it's nice to see you the town where I was born, lived a man who sailed to sea, and he told us all his life in the land of submarines. To invite our speaker Peter Randa uh, to address us with his interesting proposal. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rowan. And Alyssa, that pretty much sums up my entire life. I love garden hoses and carried slugs. Uh, so she gave me a quick brief and basically the idea is to challenge you guys and your thinking. So I'm going to start off with a speech that I delivered at a uh, competition a couple of months ago and then finish off with a kind of Petra Kucha style. Uh, sort of casual conversation around with pictures uh, around um, different experiences I've had in running my business. So, small tech delay, it won't be a moment. <laughs> I won't need it for about another eight minutes. So. Well, I've got it now. Um, um, do you want yeah. me to just close that? Yeah, I just close yeah, it for now. Cool. So it's 2037. You're in your favourite restaurant with your partner and your kids, and there's some beautiful background music playing. You're looking at the menu trying to decide what you should eat tonight. Three options jump out at you. There's the lab-grown steak. It's slightly seared on both sides and comes with some roasted vegetables. There's the impossible burger. The burger's made from yeasts and plants, but it comes with a side of fries. And then there's some tempura battered locusts with shiitake mushrooms, roasted celeriac and cricket powder gravy. This morning I'm talking about the future of food. I'm going to start off by highlighting the problems with our current system and then provide three potential solutions and then give you my take on what I think the solution's going to be. The problems with the current system are three prongs. There's the health issue, environmental issue and the ethical issue. Just recently the World Health Organization came out with a report linking red meat with cancer. They said processed red meat was a carcinogen and unprocessed red meat was probably carcinogenic. This was a very big moment in the history of vegetarianism and veganism. If you haven't heard about the report, uh, I'm not surprised. If you have, I'm also not surprised. It's a, very, a lot of people in our society still haven't heard about it because it's such a hard thing to be told. When we've grown up thinking something's good for you to then be told not only is it, not only do you not need it to be healthy, but you shouldn't have it to be healthy. The amount of resources required to produce a steak is enormous. Three of the biggest problems on the planet right now are carbon emissions, land use, and fresh water use. Agriculture is the number one contributor to all three of those problems. And then there's the ethical question. There's an entire group of our society that will look believe that we'll look back on the people who eat red meat the same way we look back on people who hunt and kill whales. I don't know if that group of people are right or not, but I know that most of us in society eat red meat, even if most of us here might not. But most people cannot bring themselves to actually kill the animal. So maybe that's telling us something. So the solutions. You've got lab-grown meat, plant-based alternatives, and insects. Lab-grown meat is what it sounds like. It's meat grown in a lab. You literally take a cutting from a live animal, uh, of, you take the, sorry, the muscle tissue and the fat tissue, and you grow it in a petri dish or something similar, feed it a special nutrient medium, and grow some steak. It's 
very, very innovative. It gets the environmental tick and the ethical tick. Uh, the health tick, probably not, because it's still red meat after all. Whatever is in red meat that makes it carcinogenic probably is, is still there. And then there's the Impossible Burger. Who's actually heard of the Impossible Burger? Hands up. Maybe about half of us. It looks like beef, tastes like beef, smells like beef, and even cooks like beef. It goes from a pink colour to kind of a golden brown and oozes what looks like blood. But it's entirely made from plants and yeasts. I think this company spent around $100 million on R&D to get it to this stage. Again, very, very innovative. It gets the environmental tick and the ethical tick and the health tick, well, it's probably too early to tell. Some people believe not because they throw in about a tablespoon of saturated fat uh, into each patty to make it taste even better. And then there's insects. 80% of the world's cultures eat insects on a regular basis. That's around 2 billion people around the planet. When I heard about this, I decided I had to look into it a bit further and I could see why. We've, we've eaten insects for almost the entire of humanity. Longer than we've been eating beef or farming animals. And there's a huge range of flavours. So there are insects that taste like kaffir, lime, lemongrass, coffee, believe it or not, uh, crab, prawns and even lollies, like those TNT lollies you had as a kid, the really sour ones. There's also a huge range of health benefits to eating insects. Some insects have more protein than steak, more omega fatty acids than salmon, and more calcium than milk. Some people say it's a superfood. And then there's the environmental stuff. Gram for gram, insects require 2,000 times less water, 100 times fewer emissions, and 10 times less land space than beef. An order of magnitude better. There's an ethical uh, plus as well, which I recently found out. A lot of insects are gregarious, meaning they, they like being close together. Naturally, you'll find them in <coughs> groups huddled together. And with the tendency for conventional farming to sort of cram more and more animals into a tighter space, this is a huge plus. So when I heard out all this, I decided I absolutely have to do something about it and, and give it a crack. So I quit my full-time job and started a business called Anteater. We would sell edible insects to chefs and restaurants around New Zealand. What could go wrong? <laughs> uh, my friends thought I was crazy. Uh, they, I think they still do. You know, they won't say I'm crazy, but I can just see it in their eyes. Uh, we've all experienced that possibly at some stage. Uh, but I did it anyway, and what happened next was quite remarkable and changed my life. About a week after we started, we had the number one restaurant in New Zealand serving ants that I had harvested. Roots Restaurant out in Middleton. Pretty soon we had four out of the top seven restaurants in New Zealand serving our products. We catered at TEDx Christchurch last year. To Papa's Bug Lab exhibition was serving our insects as well. The media jumped on board. We had uh, loads of stuff articles, which do absolutely nothing, by the way. No one reads them. A <laughs> uh, couple of radio pieces on RNZ, which were fantastic. Uh, and just about a month ago, uh, John Campbell and Nigel Latter had a piece called What Next? Some of you may have seen it. There's a few nods there. Uh, we were on the environment episode uh, for about two minutes. So that was a really special moment for us, just a year and a bit after starting. But it's just the beginning. I ultimately want to create an insect-based meat substitute, something people can have instead of red meat. It's got more protein, it's healthier for you, <clears throat> better for the environment, tastes better, and is even cheaper than the current options. It can be cheaper because the number one cost in a farm system is the food. And if 90% of the food you feed an animal is wasted with beef, and only 50% of it's wasted with insects, you can theoretically produce them half the price. So pretty soon, I believe we're going to have an alternative that's better by every measure, as long as we can get our head around it. <laughs>
which is the big challenge. You guys will be challenged later on at morning tea to give this a crack. <laughs> so I'm going to now move on to our sort of Pecha Kucha style presentation. So I'll just uh, let me know when you want the next slide. Just like every 20 seconds. If we go over, just change it and it'll keep me on track. <laughs> It's hard to, hard to say this, but this is actually the root cause of the problem. The single best thing you can do if you're an environmentalist is have one less kit. Or adopt a kit. Very, very hard thing to say. But this is the root cause of it. We've got more people we need to feed. If we keep... I don't... I don't no, let's change the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to get too controversial there. I need to switch it up myself. Uh, this is an image that really strikes me. There's a lot of a, there's a huge story here. This here is a soy crop. It's the Amazon rainforest. Uh, people who are ignorant will look at this and say, vegans and the demand for tofu, you know, soybean, blah 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 blah. This is going to feed cattle. Ninety percent of the energy in that crop will be wasted in that process. You could feed 10 times more people if you just ate the soybeans in the first place. You could turn that into insects, and it would be almost as efficient or more efficient than the soybeans. Maybe we could have more places like this throughout New Zealand or in, and around the world. Most of the South Island in New Zealand is farmlands now. When you fly in a plane, you see little square plots everywhere. Uh, personally, I'll, every time I go on a plane, I like to imagine what the world would be like 200, 500 years ago, or what New Zealand would be like. What would it look like before farming? Would we have things like this roaming around? Imagine crossing the street and seeing a, a mower in the park. They probably wouldn't live there, but you know what I mean. You've got all these amazing birds that aren't here with us anymore. Some of them are. Maybe we can bring them back to a sustainable level if we are just smarter about the kinds of things we eat. This uh, is Julio Stella. Does anyone recognise him, by the way? Nice, thank you. Uh, and his wife, Chrissy, who I'm sure does a shitload of work behind the scenes. Uh, this is our very first customer. I'm wearing my lanyard there from Startup Weekend, which is kind of like the film festival for business. Got like 48 hours and you've got to propose a business by the end of it. Quintessential chef, backwards cat, tattoos, <laughs> taking a photo of our very first ant order. He's from the LA and worked for the number one restaurant in the world, Noma. Came over here to do a collab with Julio at Roots, which is pretty cool. You can sort of trace the whole movement back to this dish, or a variation on this dish. So, ants on a shrimp was a very, very famous dish done by Noma about five years ago. And because they're the number one restaurant, they've got license to do whatever they want. And it's always amazing. And so they, they started the trend and gave permission for all the other restaurants to start playing around with insects. This is what we served up at TEDx. When people think of locusts, they think desert locusts, plagues, destroying crops, that kind of thing. This is a different species here in New Zealand. It's a very, very fussy eater. It eats two species of grass. Completely different to the one you think of. <laughs> Sorry? Do you want to play that? Yeah, play it. It's a bit yeah. loud. So this is a gr group of people at TEDx Christchurch trying insects for the first time. I don't know anyone there apart from the last guy, uh, who's, who's a great, great guy. Um, but that, that pretty much sums up people's experience. It's the look of the bug that gets you. Uh, to Papa created this for their bug lab. Did anyone try this? 
No, we're not from Wellington. Here. <laughs> um, they created. They had to use chicken, unfortunately, to bulk it out. But they created a chicken and locust patty, or, or sorry, a slider here, uh, which is huge. This is the New Zealand sevens team trying it for the first time, uh, which was a very cool experience for me. TEDx is an incredibly progressive group of people, just like you guys here. Uh, it was really cool. For the first time in my life, I went to an event, and the line for the meat was shorter than the line for everything else. It was really, really cool. And it's mostly down to this guy here, Alex Davies, who created a beautiful carrot dog, which is his kind of spin on a hot dog, roasted carrots, crumbs, oh, absolutely beautiful, really stunning. Uh, this was also one of his first dishes in the dish I described at the start, tempura battered locusts with shiitake mushrooms, roasted celeriac, and cricket powder gravy. It's a really shitty photo, I apologize for that. <laughs> uh, but it's a beautiful dish. I'm obsessed with barbecue culture. The guys who believe the more meat they eat, the more man they are, it really bothers me. And in terms of environmental impact, if I can reach that group of people, that is where I can make the most impact. So every time I have a group of people around for a barbecue, I always try and figure out a way to get them eating insects. They always do it, they always enjoy them, but changing their mindset, trying to figure out how I can do that in a larger scale throughout New Zealand really uh, interests me. Some of you have been to Thailand, Southeast Asia, um, even uh, South and North America may have seen things like this. Huge range of insects, massive, massive quantities. You see tons and tons of them every morning in the markets, people selling. Oh, uh, you can skip that one. <laughs> uh, so I did go to Southeast Asia in October last year uh, on a research trip, uh, partly funded by University of Canterbury, so a huge thank you to them. Uh, this is a hole, tarantula hole. We went out tarantula hunting with a guy who had lived through the Vietnam War. Incredible, incredible dude. Um, and he'd, he'd dig up the tarantulas and he'd hand them to his, he'd rip, whip out the fangs so they couldn't sting them, couldn't sting you, and then he'd hand them to his kids. And he'd just sort of would hunt them and hand them to his kids. Uh, perfectly safe because there's no fangs on them. Uh, the one time I noticed he didn't take the fangs out. And, and I'm like, shit, like, what if it stings the kid? She's only like 10. So I point, I point to her, I'm like, look, the fangs are still in there. It's about a 10 year old girl. She just grabs it, bites out the other fang, and puts it back. <laughs> <laughs> it gave me license to never be fearful of anything ever again. <laughs> um, this is Chef here. He's just dropped a scorpion on my business partner's back. Um, and she's, she's kind of half freaking out, half super excited. It's a great photo, eh? <laughs> And shortly after we went uh, tarantula and scorpion hunting, the sort of a, a bug deal went down. Uh, another dealer came up, dropped off this basket of uh, uh, honeycomb uh, bees, and so he cuts off a slice, gets the scales out, and weighs them. They're quite expensive over there, um, and, and starts dealing them out. It was, it was exactly like a drug deal, but it was a bug deal. I just I really like that kind of analogy. <laughs> uh, this is Mike Mayo, the owner of Cookie Time and a new business called Nutrient Rescue. Uh, he's pretty much vegan, um, obsessed with environmental and health benefits of low meat diets. Fully gave me his endorsement the other day. We went, I went around to his place, we had dinner, we exchanged products, he tried the locusts, absolutely loved them, and tried some of our ants as well, uh, which are becoming more and more famous, which is really cool. And Jane Goodall, um, just about a month ago. This is probably one of the most powerful emotional moments in my life was meeting her. She's about 83 or 87 at the moment and she gave a one hour talk just the other day and um, I quickly went up to her afterwards and just shared our vision and asked for a photo and she's so frail. I felt really bad asking but I got a photo and she was <laughs> so lovely and nice. It was a really, really cool experience. Um, so that about sums it up. I hope you've taken something away. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Peter. I think you opened up a whole lot of can of worms discussion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, uh, the um, so I'm, I'm sure we will have a lot of questions to put to Peter uh, when we're uh, over coffee and uh, cockroaches, food, 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 food